So uh, my name is Xin Yu Wang, and I am from North Dakota State University Civil Engineering Department. I am a PhD student and graduating this December. So uh, let's get started. So uh, today's topic is protection properties of binary uh, nanofilar epoxy coating for metallic components in transportation structures. So uh, what we are trying to do is to understand the binary nanoparticle reinforcement to a polymeric coating and use this modification to develop high performance coating that protect metallic surface in uh, civil infrastructures. So the outline of this presentation is very uh, just a common outline. So we have five sections. Uh, background study, coating fabrication, experimental study, performance evaluation, and uh, uh, the conclusion. So um, a little bit background statement with a annual cost of $276 billion, uh, billion dollars just in United States. Corrosion is one of the leading causes of failures in metallic infrastructures. Besides huge financial loss, corrosion-related damage caused catastrophic accidents, for example, uh, pipeline incidents. And this high risk brings people's uh, brings high and this brings high risk to people's lives and the environments. To uh, mitigate the corrosion damages, polymeric coating is widely used to protect provide a protective layer for the metal, which prevents the direct contact between a substrate and a corrosive environment. Currently, there are many options on the market, in the market, but many of them has one or more than one limitations, uh, which makes them incapable to resist the combined effect of corrosion, falling, and erosion. So in order to solve this issue, one of the most promising approaches is to have Nanoparticle reinforcement as unique properties can be provided by nanomaterials. To uh, improve the corrosion resistance, one commonly used nanoparticle is graphene. As research mentions, that graphene has the greatest has great potential to improve corrosion resistance that due to its ability to elongate the diffusion pathway. However, uh, based on our previous study, this property is always limited by its poor dispersion and the defects in the coating. Also, graphene has no significant improvement on the mechanical properties. On the other hand, uh, we found that nanosilica has advantage on reducing the voids, which is defects in the coating and good dispersion as spherical particles has least tendency to form agglomeration. So this gave us the uh, opportunity to combine nanosilica and graphene, and the hybrid nanofiller may uh, combine the advantage of both nanofillers and eliminate the drawbacks for each one. Uh, so the, excuse me. So the fabrication process in this study is present in figure A. Uh, we are trying to simplify the fabrication process so, so the coating can be produced in large quantity. The dispersion procedure only involved uh, ultrasonication and high speed disk dispersion. And with this method, the nanoparticles are well dispersed in the, into the polymeric coating. Uh, for the nanocomposite, uh, the weight content of nanoparticles were fixed at 1% with different ratio between graphene and nanosilica. Uh, the neat epoxy and epoxy that with one type of nanofiller uh, were used as references. The performance of nanocomposite were evaluated including corrosion protection, abrasion resistance, mechanical properties, and also uh, the durability. So um, 
the electrochemical impedance spectroscopy, which is EIS test, we employ to evaluate the corrosion protection of the coating and the taper abrasor for abrasion resistance, coupon tensile test for mechanical properties. The durability were evaluated by combining EIS test and the B117 salt spray test, which the impedance curve were measured before and after the sample exposed to salt spray. Also, the, uh, to evaluate the interaction of hybrid nanofiller. Uh, so the uh, hybrid nanofiller were characterized by particle size distribution and the nanocomposite were characterized by TM and ASEM. So in general, graphene are usually observed as stacked uh, layered uh, sheets and uh, nanosilica are spherical uh, particles. So in figure B uh, shows that the interaction between nanosilica and the graphene, which the nanosilica particles are attached to the surface of graphene plates. Apparently the uh, nanosilica particle were attached during the dispersion procedure uh, when high speed dis dispersion and ultrasonic application were introduced. Overall, a unique structure was formed in this hybrid nanofiller by combining the graphene and the nanosilica. The particle size distribution of single and hybrid nanofillers were also measured, which is in figure A. The curve of particle size distribution for graphene and nanosilica were narrower than the graphene plates. And also, the maximum size and also the average size was smaller than graphene, indicating the uh, presence of nanosilica broke down the agglomeration of graphene during the dispersion procedure, uh, which means the dispersion level were improved, was improved. Uh, the Corrosion resistance and durability was evaluated by combining GIS and the B117 uh, salt spray test, which the impedance curve were measured before and after the sample uh, exposed to salt spray for over 500 hours. Uh, here we have the impedance curve for the composite. Generally, the impedance values at the lowest frequency can be used to represent the barrier performance of coating. A high performance, uh, uh, high impedance values means high barrier properties. Apparently the graphene silica with a ratio of 50-50 has the strongest improvement. And uh, results are simplified in the next slide. Yep. So uh, in this case, we can see the graphene nanosilica hybrid nanofiller uh, significantly improved the corrosion resistance and the durability of the coating, as we observe no noticeable change of impedance value after uh, salt spray exposure, while the epoxy and the single filler groups showed a significant degradation. Uh, figure B image of uh, epoxy and uh, uh, graphene silica uh, composite after salt spray, we are able to see the corrosion damage in the neat epoxy and while the hybrid nanofilm coating remains intact. So uh, for abrasion resistance, incorporation of all the nanoparticles showed a reduced uh, mass loss, which means improved uh, resistance, abrasion resistance. The most significant reinforcement was observed in graphene silica sample with a ratio of 50-50. And the SEM image of the abraded surface uh, showed that the hybrid nanofiller took the advantage of the spherical nanofillers, which in our case, the nanosilica, as this type of nanofiller generally has very strong ability to fill both nano and micro voids in the composite. Also the tensile properties of nanocomposite are summarized in this slide. 
uh, the graphene nanosilica with a ratio of 50-50 showed the greatest improvement on tensor properties as, as well, uh, with improved tensile stress, uh, strain, and stiffness. The and also the findings from uh, SEM image of fracture surface showed a good agreement with the tensile properties. Relative smooth surface with large cracks were observed in knit epoxy, uh, indicating a typical brittle fracture. The fracture surface was significantly rougher when we add uh, hybrid nanofillers, where the higher surface roughness and the more compacted cleavage were observed, indicating higher energy absorption and a better fracture uh, resistance. So uh, a conclusion in this page, uh, the incorporation of hybrid nanofiller dramatically improved corrosion resistance, mechanical strength, abrasion resistance, and durability. The presence of nanosilica mitigates the defect introduced by the graphene, resulting in a more robust uh, nanocomposite. The interaction of two nanofillers, particularly the ones with different geometries, may create hybrid nanofillers that outperform the single ones. High performance coding can be achieved by the uh, incorporation of nanoparticles. Yep, so that's it. That's a very short presentation. Yep. Okay, thank you so much, Xinyi, for stepping in and presenting. Uh, do we have any any questions or comments from the uh, from the audience to Xinyi? I do okay. have a comment or question, I guess. Um, yeah, very nice uh, presentation. I was just curious uh, to me, um, the nano, the graphene nanoparticle. Um, yeah, I, I was just hoping you know you you have some sort of chemical. Uh, signature of it. I was wondering whether or not it has any sort of surface groups. Uh, along with that question, you know, uh, it seems like the dosage you're adding is pretty high uh, in terms of the uh, graphene material, um, because if it's truly nano-sized, um, traditionally, you know, 0.05% by weight of the binder would be sufficient. Anyway, that's just an observation. Yes, yes. Uh, in the uh, before we evaluate the uh, hybrid filler ones, we also do the single filler uh, uh, composite, and we ranged the the uh, weight content from 0.1 percent to three percent. So it's 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and one percent, 1.5 to 2.5 and 3%. And yep, the 0.5% actually perform better. But in, in the hybrid fillers, as the, nano, the interaction between nanosilica and uh, graphene, actually the, the dispersion level actually improved because the, the interaction between these two nanoparticles, yep. So that's why we are able to add 1%, yep. All right. Uh, yeah, just to clarify, yeah, I, I didn't mean 0.5%. I meant 0.05%. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so did you do any sort of FTRR or XPS to look at this um, graph in nanoparticle and see, you know, whether or not it carries some surface charge or surface groups? Uh, yeah, we did, but, but the just they are just uh, they are just original graphene with no uh, surface uh, treatment. Yeah. 